Let's talk a moment about Signy. Signy is one of the best damaging units that you're going to receive in Regalia of Men and Monarchs, at least early on. She is useful for quite a bit of the game in her capacity to move around the field and attack. To start, let's just look briefly at Signy's abilities. We have Pounce. Leaps through the air, ignoring obstacles which do not block line of sight. Deal 60% base damage as physical to targets adjacent to the landing zone. Whirlwind. Deals 90% of damage as thunder to all targets in range. Apply thunder for one turn. Enrage. Deals damage equal to 15% of Signy's current health as physical to herself. Applies empowered and fleet for two turns. Savage Roar. Deals 30% of base damage as pure damage and applies panicked for one turn to all enemies in range. Always hits. Massacre. Randomly targets up to four enemies in range. Deals 70% of base damage as physical damage with each strike. Strikes four times. May hit one target multiple times. And then we also have her upgrades. Her first upgrade, Instinctive motions. These upgrades are of course specific to her abilities. Pounce no longer requires the landing spot to be within Signy's line of sight. Now this means that your Pounce ability can move you anywhere regardless of obstacles in the way including both enemies and allies. This will allow you to move directly into spaces that are most advantageous for you because the enemies have been poorly stacked. Morph, Savage Wind. Whirlwind now has its cooldown period reduced by one. This means that if you like pouncing into areas where enemies are grouped up, then you'll be able to follow up immediately with Savage Wind and not have to wait too much longer for the next one. Unbound Fury, Enrage now no longer costs an activation, which means you can immediately enrage and then without using an authority point, follow up with another attack such as Pounce or Whirlwind. I have the Tiger. Increases the duration of Savage Roar's panicked effect by one. Ultimately, your crowd control ability with Signy will work that much better. No stone unturned. Masker now performs one additional hit. Ultimately, this is one morph that is somewhat optional, but that's because I don't view Massacre as the best ability for Signy. I think that Signy works really, really well when attacking multiple enemies. And for that purpose, it's all about field positioning and hitting enemies with your basic abilities more often. And you can often get better damage out of a Pounce followed by a Whirlwind than you can with Massacre. So getting an additional hit for the cost of three points is not exactly the best, except when you're dealing with a single enemy. When using Signy, you'll find that she often moves first. In comparison to most characters, she is quite fast. Now first, let's talk about Pounce. Pounce leaps through the air, ignoring obstacles that do not block line of sight, because I do have that currently upgraded. However, normally, if you don't, you'll be limited by enemies. So in this case, you'll see that this square is not accessible for me to move in, but I have the ability to pounce. Now this is good because if enemies group up in a way that you can hit behind them multiple times, then you can absolutely pounce. And you'll see that I can really move anywhere using this pounce. And so when I move there, by pouncing, I still have my movement points left. If there were multiple enemies there, I would have done damage in a cross section. To give the best example of this, you'll see enemies have already grouped up. So I can quickly move up, leap directly into this area, and I could end my turn, but this is where Signy's true strength comes in. Her strength relies not on using authority points for massacre when fighting multiple groups of enemies, but for leaping in 
and doing successive blows because ultimately Massacre is going to deal 70% of base damage to either four or five enemies depending on whether you've morphed the ability. However, this for no points if it's your first action or one point if it's your second is going to do 60% of base enemies base damage to up to four enemies because of the cross section which means that if you spend an authority point to do it a second time and there are two enemies just like here instead of 60% it's 120% and if you spend the two authority points it would have taken to activate massacre against these two enemies we would have amassed 180% or 360% damage just for fighting two enemies. Whereas that same Massacre ability against these two enemies, if that's all it hit, would have only been 280% unmodified or 350% modified. So Massacre would become worth it if you upgraded it when fighting two or less enemies. But if I were to have hit three enemies with this, it would have made Pounce even more powerful. But of course, Pounce isn't the only ability that she has to use. If we activate Blitz against spending an authority point, we can Whirlwind. Now Whirlwind, after a Pounce, is even better. Not only will it Sunder, it will do 90% Thunder damage. And if you have it morphed, it'll automatically reduce the cooldown so that you can use it more often. So a pounce followed by a whirlwind into enemies are even more powerful for the cost of just again a single authority point. But again, that is not all we have. We have Enrage. Now Enrage, in this case, will hurt Signy and applies Empowered and Fleet for two turns. Now this does cause an activation, which ultimately means if you're not using authority points, that it is effective for one turn less. But if you morph it and upgrade it, it is, becomes worth the cost, in my opinion. So, unmorphed, I tend not to use it. Morphed, it becomes very useful. And then let's not forget about Savage Roar. Savage Roar deals 30% of damage as pure damage. And always applies panic for one turn to all enemies in range. It always hits. This is a way to ensure that you do in fact get the first hit because you cannot miss with this and it directly affects them it causes the enemy to flee in a random direction which isn't really good if you're planning on doing multiple pounces such as this or if you need them to stick around for a whirlwind that's about to come off of cooldown but if you found that you have pounced into a group of enemies and are running out of options, then really perhaps you should consider using Savage Roar. And they become instantly panicked. Let's go ahead and watch them flee. Run away! I'm panicked and running this way! They still get to use their ranged attacks. Finally, let's talk about Massacre. Massacre is her best single target damage, but it's very, very conditional. I do maintain that unupgraded, it is far more efficient to spend your authority points on pouncing and whirlwinding, or even just pouncing. However, if you have a single target that you need to take down quickly, then the pounce damage and the whirlwind damage no longer boost due to multiple enemies. In effect, they are much weaker. So what we can do is we can Massacre, meaning that a single target will either take 280% of your base damage, or they're going to take 350% damage. This means, in this case, damage summary 198 to 247 per hit. This thing's gonna die. So, now you see that really Signy is your best burst damage early on for multiple enemies and has a great single target boss killer if you have them alone. Do not rely on Massacre if you're facing bosses surrounded by minions. 
that's just not going to work out for you. And so that's Signe in a nutshell. She hits hard, she hits fast, and she's best used when stacking authority points to deal massive damage to multiple groups of enemies. When there's single target damage on the table, she may not be your best bet, but she is a great one to go against the hordes of monsters that plague you and regalia of men and monarchs. In the meantime, I'm Nedanoski, and I'm Signy. As always, have fun!